Hi, I'm Julie from This Beautiful Farm Life, and today we are going to be making pizza soup for a crowd. So tonight we're having uh, dinner with a big group, and so I'm going to be making one of our family's favorite meals. And this one goes together really fast and is nutrient dense and feeds a big crowd. So the recipe that I'm going to make today is going to feed 20 because we're going to have a lot of people here. But the recipe that I have posted below in this post is actually written for 10 people. So you can double it up if you want to make a big recipe like I am. We have all of our fresh ingredients out here so you can see what we are going to be making soup with. It's pretty um, simple staples that you keep in your kitchen most days and not hard to do and then have a big crowd coming. I didn't always love hospitality because it was scary and it was difficult to feed a lot of people, but I put together a good list of soups that our family likes that we can feed a big crowd with. And when we make our own fresh bread and we put those soups and breads together and we can serve a really big crowd and we love that. So I'm using chicken bone broth that I just made in my Instant Pot and um, some of it's still cooking back there so I left it there. Um, and then I've got sausage and hamburger that we raise here on our farm that's fresh. We are going to be putting um, nitrate free pepperoni in this soup as well today so that it just tastes as good as pizza. And then I have einkorn bulgur. Now if you've never made bulgur, it's just a really easy thing to do with whole grain einkorn. Um, you can read about how I like to soak nuts and seeds in my post on soaking raw nuts and seeds and why we do that for phytic acid to, to get rid of the phytic acid. So I soaked these einkorn um, whole wheat berries last night overnight in some cold water on the counter and then earlier today I drained them and put them in a pot with some fresh water, brought them to a boil and simmered them for about 20 minutes then left them in that hot water with the burner off for another 30 minutes or so and they are nice and tender now. In fact you can see, um, I'll post a picture that shows that they're just starting to sprout which doesn't hurt the soup but makes them super nutrient dense when you eat sprouts so it's not a problem. And so we're going to use this today instead of pasta in my soup. Um, soup made in one pot and you don't have a sink full of dishes, a kitchen full of dishes when your guests are arriving. And you also have it done ahead of time. So it's just sitting on the stove simmering and when the doorbell rings you are free to go say hello and greet your guests and be a good hostess. So now I'm going to do my garlic. Um, I do my garlic with a garlic press. This is a Xylus garlic press and uh, I've had it for many, many years. I'll see if I can um, link that in the post if they still make them. Um, it's really heavy duty. I probably have this for 20 years and um, I've gone through other garlic presses that I've tried and I always come back to this one because it's very, very good. So I'm gonna chop my pepper now and then we'll put the garlic in just a minute when the meat's done brown. just about ready to uh, add in the 
liquid ingredients. Now, I'm using canned tomatoes that I can from uh, my garden. You can certainly use store canned tomatoes, but you could also just use fresh tomatoes. Just peel them, chop them up, and make sure that you cook them long enough that they get tender. I only can tomatoes. And then what I do when I want tomato sauce is I just dump a can of tomatoes into my Vitamix and mix it up and blend it until it's nice and smooth. And that is my tomato sauce. I like to just do all one thing. So I can only tomatoes and I just make my tomato sauce for tomato sauce. Now, now I do use um, tomato paste in most of my soups when I'm using tomato products or in my um, spaghetti or whatever because it's really difficult to get home canned tomatoes thick enough um, to not need tomato paste. So we're going to dump those in and go from there. Now we're going to add a couple good tablespoons of Italian seasoning and I like to crush it when I use it so that it's nice and pungent and fresh. So I'm going to do that. Farmhouse. I'm glad that you came to learn how to make pizza soup for a crowd. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and watch for more videos and posts. And come on back to the farmhouse to enjoy farm fresh food, wholesome living, and simple farmhouse beauty. See you next time. Let's eat.